Well, here we are in, uh, in Crafronet. I'm here at Karoo Taxidermy with uh, a gentleman that I met a few minutes ago called Tim, who does the taxidermy. This bad boy is, I believe, just under half a ton. It doesn't look that big, under half a ton. If I put my hand on this paw, you'll actually see how big this paw is, and this paw isn't even as stretched out. If you go hunting, I believe that to, to just to have your animal stuffed, which taxidermy is, uh, life-size, re real look-alike, uh, you um, it'll probably cost about 35,000 rand. Now look, you might want to get a few of these instead of having a watchdog at night, you just put the lights on. I'll tell you, some guys are going to get a shock <laughs> when they see this. <laughs> but you've got no idea, just standing next to this animal, uh, man, if this thing comes at you, you don't stand a chance. When you look around you, you'll see the art that goes into putting something like this together, the art that goes into making something lifelike. I mean, it's easy to shoot it. The real challenge is presenting it in such a way that it looks lifelike. And so, speaking about life, well, we have life. Uh, the law came by Moses, but grace came by Jesus Christ. Grace is life. And so we have that life in us, the life which is the light of man. So, enjoy the program, the, the revival, the mini whole town revival here in Crawford Bless you, bless you, bless you. Jesus, Be Set Free TV. Real life, Be Set Free TV. The Holy Spirit flow. Jesus, Be Set Free TV. Real life, Be Set Free TV. The Word. Tonight's message is entitled, Come to Grace. Come to Grace. The Bible says there, And the scribes and the Pharisees brought unto him a woman taken in adultery. And when they had set her in their midst, they say unto him, Master, this woman was taken in adultery in the very act. How Moses in the law commanded us that such should be stoned. But what sayest you? This they said, tempting him, that they might have to accuse him. But Jesus stooped down with his finger, wrote on the ground, as though he heard them not. So when they continued asking him, he lifted up himself and said unto them, He that is without sin among you, let them cast the first stone at her. And again he stooped down and wrote on the ground. And when Jesus had lifted up himself and saw none but the woman, he said unto her, Woman, where are those thine accusers? Has no man condemned thee? She said, No man, Lord. And Jesus said unto her, Neither do I condemn you. Go and sin no more. The scribes and the Pharisees, those that are in the law, will always judge others. Those that are in the law will always bring the law on others. They will always judge. If you are in the law, that woman was a Jewish woman. She was in the law. She had accusers. The law had judged her for doing something wrong and they then brought her to Jesus. And Jesus said to the men, listen, if any of you have not sinned, cast the first stone. And none cast the first stone. And when 
Jesus asked her, said, Madam, where are your accusers? If you are in the law, you will always have an accuser. You will always have something or somebody telling you that you are not good enough. Telling you that you have made a mistake. Telling you that you are falling short. Telling you, bringing guilt to you. You will always have that if you are in the law. But Jesus then turns to her and says, Madam, I do not condemn you. If you are in the law, you will have condemnation, you will have guilt, you will have death. But when you are with Jesus, there is no condemnation. The man that got caught, that the, the criminal that was supposed to be crucified on the day Jesus was, was brought in the courts of law, not by brought in the courts of law, that, that guy, Bartimaeus, was in jail. When he listened out on the court at Golgotha, or listened out in the court, all he heard there was crucify him, crucify him, crucify him. When Bartimaeus heard the key turn in the door, he knew that he was going to be crucified. But when he got out and he stood next to Jesus, it was the thief who had life. And Jesus was crucified. Let's go quickly to Matthew 8, verse 5. It says, And when Jesus entered into Capernaum, there came unto him a centurion, begging him, beseeching him, and saying, Lord, my servant lies at home sick and with palsy, grievously tormented. Verse 7. And Jesus said unto him, I will come and heal him. A man that was not a Jew, a man that was a Roman, a man that was in the law, a man that had a problem. Where did he go when he had his problem? Did he go to Pilate? Did he go to his leaders? Did he go to the, his philosophers? Did he go to his Roman uh, Caesars? Did he go to them? No, he came to Jesus. Let's go to Luke uh, 7 verse 37. And behold, a woman in the city, which was a sinner, when she knew that Jesus sat at meat, means to eat, when, she, when Jesus was sitting at the, at the Pharisee's house, eating, brought an ambassador, an ambassador box of ointment, and stood at his feet behind him, weeping, and began to wash his feet with his tears, and did wipe them with hairs on her head, and kissed his feet, and anointed them with the ointment. And Jesus answered, saying unto him, Simon, I have somewhat to say unto thee. And he said, Yes, Master, continue. Say what you want to say. And Jesus tells the story. He says, Listen, there was a certain creditor that had two debtors. There was a certain person that, that was owed money to. In other words, the one owed him 500 pence and the other one only owed him 50 pence. And when they had nothing to pay, he frankly forgave them both. Tell me, therefore, which of them will love him most? Here is a story about two men owing one man money. This gentleman over here owed this man 500 rand. This gentleman over here owed this man 50 cents. This man says to them, listen, don't worry about your debt, forget it. He says to this man, don't worry about your debt, forget it. Which one loves this man the most? The one who had 50 cents written off or the one who had 500 rand written off? The 500 rand. John 3.3 3 says that a Pharisee by the name of Nicodemus came to Jesus and said to Jesus, what must I do to be saved? He didn't go to his lawmen. He didn't go to other philosophers. He came to Jesus and said to Jesus, what must I do to be saved? Why did the Roman soldier, why did the sinner and the prostitute, why did the, the religious man come to Jesus? 
Why? They came to Jesus because Jesus is grace. They came to Jesus because they would not find condemnation, they would not find judgment with Him, they would find the solution. And Jesus says, listen, the one that comes with the biggest problem will love me the most because I'm able to forgive them completely. Grace. He is grace. Doesn't matter how big your problem, the bigger your problem you have, the more you will thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. He is grace. Grace is not a doctrine. Grace is a person. Let's go to John 15. Listen now carefully to me. Many people who are in the law read this John 15 and some people cannot even read it because it brings so much fear to them. Let's read it. I am the true vine, and my father is the husbandman. In other words, I am the vine, Jesus says, and my father is the one that takes care of the vine, vineyard. Every branch in me that bears not fruit, he taketh away. And every branch that bears fruit, he purges it, that it may bring more fruit. Now ye are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. I am the vine, ye are the branches, he will abide in me, and I in him the same bringeth much fruit, for without me he can do nothing. Uh -huh. If a man abide not in me, he is cast forth as a branch, as with it, and men gather them and cast them into the fire, and they are burned. Some translations say that if you are in the branch, if you are in the vine, and you bear no fruit, you will be cut off. Do you know? You will be cut off. And then it says later that men that you will be gathered and thrown into the fire. Ah! That brings fear. That brings condemnation. That brings guilt. And the question you ask immediately is hey, am I in the vine? Hey, Am I producing fruit? And very often the answer is no. I'm not producing fruit. And because you think you're not producing fruit, you feel that you are cut off from the Lord and the Lord is over there somewhere and you are here and you are now in hell's fire. But if you understand what that verse really says, the word cut off is a Greek word meaning a hero. The word says, if you do not produce fruit, the cutting off is the wrong translation. The cutting off means the word ahiru, which means to be lifted up. If you do not produce fruit, he will lift you up to the sun. He, was, he will not condemn you. He will not judge you. He will not cut you off. Did the father cut the prodigal son off? No, he gave him the fattened calf. The word ahiro means to lift up. If you believe you're not producing fruit, he will not cut you off, he will lift you up. Amen. But Robbie, you see there it says, he will gather me up and throw me into the fire. Da sa da, da si hell fira. that's the hell fire there, got you. No, no, no. It doesn't say that He will gather you up. It says men will gather you up. Which men? Religious law men will bring accusation against you if you don't do what they want you to do. They will gather you into the fire. Hellfire? No, no, no. The fire of condemnation. They will condemn you. So God will not cut you off. He will lift you up to Himself. But religious men, because you're not doing what they want you, they will try and throw you into the fire. God will never do that. He, he will never cast you into hell. 
Because the cross is complete. You who are unrighteous have been made righteous. You who were in sin have been made sinless. You who were in the law, He fulfilled the law for you. You were who were born into curse, He became the curse for you. That you are able to come into a place now of sinlessness, of grace, of life, of peace, of joy, of a fullness of who He is. That you are now one of the sons of God. One of the sons. And if one of the sons, then with an inheritance, an inheritance of blessing upon blessing upon blessing, of glory upon glory upon glory. Not a fading glory. Not a glory that is fading. Not a glory that brings death. But a glory unto glory. A glory that brings life upon life upon life upon life. Life to you, life to you, life to you. Hallelujah. <laughs> With every eye closed and head bowed tonight, if you're in this place and you say, Robbie, I want to come to grace. I want to come out of the law. I want to come out of bondage, of judgment. I made me tired. It's made me exhausted. It's brought death to me to my vision that you gave me. I don't want to go any longer <coughs> the way I'm going. I want to be reborn this time into life. This time into grace. This time into peace and joy and righteousness and goodness. This time into your presence, Father, where I belong. Lift it up to you. Not by what I can do, but what you have done for me. If that is you to decide, and you want me to pray for you, and you say, Robbie, I want to be born again, born from above. Just put your hand up high tonight. I want to be born again. If you put your hand up, just stand for me quickly. Just stand for me quickly. I want to pray for you right now. By the way, brothers and sisters, it's impossible to backslide. If you've come to the Lord once, you are always with Him. He'll never leave you nor forsake you. He'll turn his back on you. You might feel bad about what you've done, but just say, hey Lord, sorry, sorry, sorry. Here I am your son. Here I am your son. Here I am your son. So if you're standing up tonight, just come to the front quickly. Let's pray for you very quickly. Let's go and say the sinner's prayer quickly. quickly. Come running tonight. Come running. Come running to the mercy seat tonight. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. Come, come. Come, come. Look at me, everybody sitting here or standing here right now. If you are in this place, right? You'll be born once into sin unto death going to hell. No money, no manpower, no church, no church man. No other sacrifice can remove your sins except for Jesus. You were born once into unrighteousness as a child of wrath. But now you're able to be born again. This time into life. This time into His presence. This time into righteousness. This time into grace. This time into mercy. This time into good things. Are you ready to pray and receive Jesus as your personal Savior? Let's close our eyes. Everybody in this place, let's pray together. Father God, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, I've been born once into sin. Into death. Going to hell. No money. No man. No church. No church man. No sacrifice can remove my sins. Except you, Jesus. Tonight, I'm being crucified with you. My old self is being put to death. I'm being resurrected into life, reborn from above, into righteousness, into my Father's presence, where I'll dwell forever, into grace, into the throne of grace, a new creation. I don't deserve it. It's by your grace and my faith. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'm saved.
I receive you tonight as my personal Savior. Amen. Welcome to the kingdom of heaven. Welcome to the kingdom of heaven. Welcome, my brother, to the kingdom. Welcome, mommy. Welcome, welcome. Welcome, sir, to the kingdom, to the kingdom. Grace, grace. Life, life. Peace, peace. Blessing, blessing. Huh? Welcome, Goko. Bless you, bless you. Bless you, bless you. Bless you, bless you. Welcome to the kingdom of heaven. Welcome, friend. Welcome. Welcome, sir. Welcome, sir, to the kingdom of heaven. How are you feeling now? Well, well, bless you, bless you. Nothing can take what you've received tonight. Nothing can take away what you've received tonight. Two things. How do you speak to your Father? Quite simple. Father, in the name of Jesus. And you can talk to Him like I'm talking to you now. And He'll talk back to you. Just listen. Huh? Get yourself a Bible. Huh? And know that He dwells in you. Huh? Amen, 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 amen. Bless you, bless you, bless you as you go be seated. Thank you so much. Wow. Let's just praise the Lord in this place if there's somebody alive here right now. Jesus, Be Set Free TV. Real life, Be Set Free TV. Testimonies. Um, my name is Charlotte Fluis. I'm from Grafrenet. Um, when the pastor was praying for me, it was like, it was awesome. For the first time, I felt the power of God. I felt the power moving within me. It's, it's great. It's great to know God. <laughs> Hi, my name is Rungla. My surname is Boke. Um, I want to thank for, I want to thank God for the for the nice for the nice things, the wonderful things what did God do, and it's from from for my good to, to stand right here for God, for God grace and I think it's God grace, um, to stand right here because God grace is wonderful, and my God is love in me and I am love in God and I want to praise the God, for everything everything is possible by my God and I thank my God for mercy, for grace, and for power. Hi, my name is Paulina Skippers. When I walked to church, to the service, um, I was walking with my, with my son. Um, I asked the Lord to touch me tonight. And so the Lord did touch me tonight. And it feels so good inside knowing that the Lord was thinking of me and I'm feeling so great inside I'm feeling like I'm loving again thank you Jesus Be Set Free TV Real Life Be Set Free TV Seed for Souls Wow, welcome for Seed for Souls the Bible is full of stories of people that sowed in the time of famine and they reaped in that same time. Genesis 26 speaks about Isaac sowing in the time of famine and that same year reaping a hundredfold. Seed for souls uh, is your opportunity to sow. You might be in famine, but sow my brother, sow my sister, you will reap that harvest. Jesus Be Set Free TV goes out and gets people healed and saved and set free. Miracles, miracles, miracles. We're part of that, that cloud of witnesses. We are declaring that gospel. We are taking the gospel to the utter ends of the earth and seeing Him appearing. And when He appears, people are healed and saved and set free. Genesis 8.22, as long as the earth remains, seed, time and harvest, summer and winter, night and day, hot and cold, these shall never cease. Sow a seed. Either you can sow a seed through um, internationally, on, online, through PayPal, to pay via PayPal, www.paypal.com. Click on Send Money. Click on Send Money Online. The email that you enter is robbie at jesusbesetfree.tv. Enter the amount. Click Personal Payments and click continue. They'll send an email to me and once I get the email 
I will then be able to access your seed. Or you can sow direct through Western Union, sow the seed to Robbie Cancross, SMS me the reference number. In the SMS include the answer of the question that you answered for them and also include your address, your name and address. Or in South Africa, you can deposit uh, finances directly into our account. Be set free, FNB, 6205-184-8855, branch 222726. That's for direct deposit in South Africa. If you want to use this account number to deposit internationally, there is our SWIFT details. Or if you want to sow by debit order, this is the number you phone in South Africa, 083-989-8149, and we will set that up for you immediately. To sow by debit order that you have a seed in the ground every month with a harvest, monthly harvest. Blessings, blessings, blessings. Peace, peace, peace. Father, I receive the seed that has been sown into these accounts right now, and I agree with the harvest in Jesus' mighty name. Life and peace to you, life and peace to you, life and peace to you.